Hi there to our community group leaders. I'm recording this teaching series extra specifically for Sunday, July 1st, uh, but I want to use this opportunity to make a special request of you. If you remember back in June, I asked you to put aside your normal teaching material, your normal teaching plan, and for one Sunday, um, ask those five questions of accountability that, that we talked about. Uh, am I more in love with God than ever before? Am I more compassionate toward people? Am I loving myself as Christ commanded? Am I saying yes to God and no to sin? Those are five very important accountability questions. Well, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to ask you, in fact, I'm going to make a specific request. Would you set aside your normal teaching plan for the month of August? In fact, it's the four Sundays of August and the first Sunday of September to do a study with me about community. And I have a lot of thoughts about our community groups within our church. Um, not to be alarmist, but several of our community groups are struggling right now. And so um, I want to join, uh, ask you to join me on a journey of walking through what does, not what does my community group look like, but what does true community look like? And we're going to base this five-week conversation around one verse of Scripture. And we're going to go to several different places in the Bible that exemplify this. But I was reading through First and Second Corinthians. If you know anything about those two books, it is it, Paul addresses First and Second Corinthians to a very troubled community. They were in Corinth, uh, a society known for its immorality. The church that should have been a light was struggling with its own internal chaos and all kinds of crazy things going on. So at the end of 2 Corinthians, Paul gets done with all the issues he has to address, all the theology, all the discourse, and this is not a throwaway line. It is a brilliant line. He, he says this, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, become mature, be encouraged, be of the same mind, be at peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. When I read that, I, I circled that in my Bible, and that is, from everything I've read of the New Testament, my favorite single sentence summary of what community ought to produce in our lives. It ought to be a thing of joy, not a thing of burden. Uh, community ought to make us mature, that we can grow better together than we can in isolation. Community should be encouraging Community should be unified, and community should bring us peace, an encounter with the peace of God. So I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to ask you, as a community group leader, would you memorize 2 Corinthians 13, 11? And would you start to size up your community group as you're leading it? Do you see these characteristics at play? I hope you do. But if you don't, you say, this is an area that we need to work on. And then again, I'm going to ask you to set aside your normal teaching plan for the four Sundays in August, the first Sunday in September, and walk with me through and teaching our community groups and discussing with our community groups. Here's what our community should look like. And if not, we need to make some changes. And if it does, we need to affirm that and hang on to that. Make sure that we preserve that. So join me for this study, and I am going to be praying that God is going to do some great things in our community, that he's going to reignite our excitement for loving one another as fellow followers of Christ. As always, it's my privilege to serve you. Thank you for taking time to consider this, and I ask that you join me on this journey. God bless you today. Bye-bye.